uh, Yeshua, he was always adults, always adults, or people at the age of majority. It was never infants. And one of the one of the many great lies that is being perpetrated is the belief that infants were starting to be baptized many centuries ago. It appears, almost certainly, that the concept of infant baptism did not even start until the 16th century. And any references to it prior to that are forgeries. And in fact, the word baptism is not from Greek, even though it is claimed to be from Greek. It is one of the many tricky words created from the college of, by the College of Abbreviators, otherwise known as the Scrivener Notaries, Scribo Venia, Scribes of Indulgences, otherwise known as the Jesuits. And it means four words. Bar, apto, is mo, moloch. Bar, sol, apto, to fit, to prepare, is, for this reason, mo, moloch. So, to prepare the soul for moloch. Baptism, baptismo. Now, I know when I said that, I know when I described that, that, that this is a concern for people. Because we are saying that baptism not only is a, a preparation of the soul to Moloch, but that the, the process isn't done by trickery down at the church. It's done in the hospital during the delivery of the newborn baby. Well, I'm here to provide some additional evidence to show that it is, in fact, and not only is it true, but it's much, much worse. And, in fact, their own words prove to you that this is exactly what they're doing. Now, why is this important? We'll talk about it in a moment, why this is important. Because this is their ultimate Achilles heel. It is both the source of their power and their ultimate Achilles heel. Because a law without remedy is, a, is unlawful and an act done through trickery and deception is a fraud and fraud negates all the subsequent actions and claims. Well, let's have a look at some of the words that they say about baptism. And let's quote the Canon Law of 983 of the Roman cult under Book 4, Function of the Church, Part 1, the Sacraments, Title 1, Baptism, Chapter 3, Those to be Baptized. This is what they say under Roman Canon Law, Canon 849. Baptism, the gateway to the sacraments and necessary for salvation, and we know what salvation is, salvage, by actual reception, or at least by desire, is validly conferred only by a washing of true water with the proper form of words. Through baptism, men and women are freed from sin, Savage from sin, are reborn, so to be reborn is to die first, are reborn as children of God and configured, configured to Christ by an indelible character. Configured is a replacement. Indelible character are incorporated into the church, incorporated, assigned. That's an extraordinary definition full of implications. But let's go back through some of the key things they say here. They say that it is necessary for salvation. Now, if you go and look at maritime law, you'll find that salvation, salvage, there is no live salvage. So, and they confirm that it is a freeing of sin, of original sin. So to salvage original sin, the baby must be dead because there is no live salvage. And we see the words configured, meaning something replaces that, a void is created and incorporated in ownership. And this is all to an infant. Well, okay, what about the issue of baptism occurring in a hospital? Well, what we see here is Canon 867, part two, an infant in danger of death is to be baptized without delay. I repeat that. An infant in danger of death is to be baptized without delay. Well, let's keep going. Canon 850. 
Baptism is administered according to the order prescribed in the approved liturgical books, except in case of urgent necessity. Well, if they're claiming the baby's about to die, remembering they can't salvage original sin unless the baby's dead, except in case of urgent necessity, when only those things required for the validity of the sacrament must be observed. In other words, if the baby's about to die and someone's saying the baby's about to die, they basically have to do the ritual and nothing more. Canon 857, part one. Apart from a case of necessity, like imminent death, the proper place of baptism is a church or oratory. In other words, they're telling us there that if the baby's about to die, they can baptize it wherever they like, like a hospital. And Canon 862, except in the case of necessity, like the baby about to die, no one is permitted to confer baptism in the territory of another without the required permission, not even upon his own subjects. So, if the baby's about to die, then of course there are people, other than the ordinary, who can uh, perform the ritual. And one of the things you find is midwives are licensed. They're licensed under ecclesiastical law. One moment while I just turn off the mic and just blow my nose, I'll be 30 seconds, one second. Thank you. So here in their own laws, we find that they have set up the scenario where if a baby is claimed to be imminently uh, in, in risk of death, that a midwife or some other uh, people can, who are licensed can perform the act. They've already told you that baptism involves the salvation of sin and there is no live salvage, so the baby has to be dead, ritually has to be dead. And they've told you that the baby is reborn through the ritual. So they've given you the clues. They've told you the clues that a series of acts are taking place in baptism. Well, let's go back to a number of things that we know about the process of birth in a hospital before I do that, I want to add two words that we've spoken about before. I mentioned to you the word bank as origin for bar ank, two Egyptian words, bar being soul and ank being the symbol of immortal life, Isis, Venus and Lucifer, the feminine of Lucifer. So bar ank, meaning literally the soul of Lucifer, or the soul of, of uh, Satan, Saturnia. I also mentioned the meaning of the word treasure, which also appears in the 16th century, one of the many of hundreds of words that appeared magically in the 16th century, many to be immortalized in the magical works of Shakespeare through the College of English in Rome, Jesuit College of English in Rome. And treasure being three words. Tre, meaning three, trinity, there's that three again. As, meaning short for bronze coins, coins. Su, being the shortened version of sub, under beneath or close to. And re, being property. Meaning the word treasure literally means three bronze coins on or near the property. Now I mentioned this a few weeks ago, the significance of that statement, three bronze coins on or near the property is a direct description of the ritual of three coins being placed on a body by the Egyptians as the first practitioners of the salvaging of souls, the salvaging of souls, by the ferryman who took those coins as a fee as he ferried the soul across the river Styx to the other side. So embedded in treasure, we see a direct reference to the most valuable thing in their system being the soul, and we see a direct reference to a ritual in the salvaging of the soul. Now the word salvation and salvage was a key part of the canon law. 
What do we know of some of the ritual performed in birth? Well, we see the mother in great pain in, in birth. And I'd suggest to you that that represents a sacrament of penance being performed. So that the birth of the baby is a remittance, a gift, the sacrament of penance. And hence, the whole process can also be regarded as an indulgence. And when the baby is born, the umbilical cord is cut. When the umbilical cord is cut, the baby is separated. The baby is abandoned. The baby becomes an orphan at that moment. And then we see that the baby is cleaned. A ritual that is performed on the dead. And then we see that an oil is often uh, just wiped across the baby's forehead. The anointment. The sacrament of last rites is the anointment of the sick. It is a ritual performed before the dead. It is a sealing. And then we find in America and many countries around the world a mandatory rule still at birth. The use of water diluted with silver nitrate. When we have many, many antibiotics and many examples of uh, treatments that do not require silver nitrate, that have things that are far less dangerous. But the use of silver nitrate, that is silver that, has been, uh, re that remains after the gold has been extracted. Of course, we know in their system gold equals the soul. Always has represented the soul, the bar. And we see that silver nitrate is placed in very low quantities but is placed in water that is then put across the eyes and, and it's often wiped across the mouth, but certainly across the eyes. And is this not the ritual of the three bronze coins, of the three coins placed on or near the body? This is the payment of the ferryman. This is the ritual of the baby dead. In a hospital mandated by law. The rituals of the Roman cult embedded in every society in the Western world. Every society. And we've already named the sacrament of penance, we've already named the sacrament of anointing of the sick, and we are now describing the sacrament of baptism. All the sacraments, all seven sacraments, appear to be part of the ritual of baptism which is why they call it the gateway to the sacraments. It is all the sacraments performed. They have made baptism the ultimate, ultimate celebration. The, as, as Mac, that I mentioned before, in one of our conversations, used the word, the hermetic sealing. And then, of course, water is poured over the head, and that is absolutely the sacrament of uh, baptism in using a then of water. Uh, and of course the baby is reborn but in that process in the sealing a void is created and in baptism the Holy Spirit fills the void and the Holy Spirit is not the baby's soul because the baby is now soulless because the baby's soul has been taken by the ferryman to Mo to Mole to Moloch to Satan this is their ritual this is not mine this is not my thinking this is their twisted thinking and it is performed on every single baby in their hospitals. Well, why is this relevant? <clears throat> well, it's relevant to know this, but why is it relevant also in terms of the public side? We know that they create three Sestic heavy trusts. And we know that they write bonds of extraordinary value on the birth of babies. And those bonds, as every negotiable instrument, is a perfected indulgence. That is the origin. That's the private. The public is the bond. The private is the ritual. The public is the bond. That's the separation of church and state. Every public ritual is a perfection of a private ritual. It's the mirror of the two. So they can't write a bond unless the ritual has been performed. And we see that on it. The same is going to court. They can't write the bonds when they send you off to prison unless the sacrament of penance has been perfected, even if the idiots 
that are running the asylum have no idea.